Okay, so we're going to start with the basics. The very first thing you want to do is you want to get your boxer into their fighting stance. Now, if they're right-handed or left-handed, uh, they'll obviously adopt a slightly different stance, but it's important you find that out before and you get them in the correct stance. Although you're not training them to compete, you want them to feel like they're about to, okay? And I promise you, if you, if you manage to pull that off, then your clients will be happy and they'll keep coming back. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get them in their stance. So we're going to be dealing a lot with, well, we're only going to be dealing with a right-handed uh, boxer. But like I say, if you had a left-hander, um, everything's pretty much the same, just kind of reversed, okay? But like I say, we're dealing with a right-handed boxer to start with. So, different ways of getting your boxer in their stance. I find this is probably the easiest way. So the first thing you're gonna do is just, be, they're gonna put their feet together. So they're right, yeah, right next to each other. And then you're gonna just get them to open their feet so they're about shoulder width apart, so it's nice and wide. Now with their weaker foot, so if they're right-handed, their weaker foot will be their left. Boxer's just gonna take a nice big step forwards with that weaker foot, so they're gonna step forwards, perfect. Then their feet, they're gonna rotate 45 degrees. Perfect. Then they're just going to bend the knees just slightly. You don't obviously be squatting down, but just slightly. And then make sure that their back foot comes up onto the ball, so onto the toe, so the heel's slightly off. And that's the from waist down, that's how you want your boxer to set up. Automatically, you'll see that the left shoulder or the lead shoulder is going to be now pointing towards you. With the hands, then, a few different ways to set it up. We're always taught your back hand or your right hand, in this case, is right handed, sits nice and tight uh, onto the cheek, other hand. There we go, sits nice and tight on the cheek, and then the left hand comes out almost like you're holding uh, like a microphone. If you just want to turn it sideways as well, so you can see, good, and then turn it away as well. Okay, perfect. Now, Charlie's done some boxing before, so he's got his own style, um, so you may not see him completely strict with what we said, but where possible, if you can get your client to stick to this stance, uh, great. Some of the things you'll be looking for, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of cue in, is maybe this left hand dropping a lot, or the right hand dropping when you throw the left hand. Little things like that. If you can pick that up in your client, uh, they're going to feel like they're really getting their money's worth from you. Okay, so moving on to the next uh, lesson then, and we'll look at footwork. Okay, so we're going to move on to footwork. Um, already said it, we're not going to uh, treat our client like about stepping in the ring, but again, if you can get moving about with correct footwork, it will keep them balanced, able to throw shots, and again, they'll feel like more of a boxer than if they're just dancing about uh, you know, however they want to. So, obviously, you've got your boxer in their boxing stance, so you set them up, they're in their boxing stance. When your boxer moves forwards, backwards, left and right, we don't want the feet catching up together and we don't want them crossing each other. Okay? It's really important that you, you maintain visual on their feet as well as their, as their hands uh, when you're taking them through their drills. Uh, again, like I say, if you can spot these sorts of things, it'll make the client feel like you are, um, you, know, you are really watching them and that you do know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about. Okay, so if we're going to be moving forwards, quite simply, the lead foot, so the front foot, moves first and the back foot follows. And we only take really small steps. We don't want to be jumping about anywhere. So I'm just going to get Charlie to step forwards twice. You'll see his lead foot go forwards, and his back foot will then follow. He moves about two inches each time. One more forwards, and then backwards. It's the opposite. Back foot moves forwards, and the lead leg follows. Excellent. Just if we go forwards and backwards one more time. There you go, and then all the way back. Okay, you see his hands stay up, he stays balanced, all the weight straight down the centre. If Charlie or our boxer wants to move left, his left leg will, it doesn't matter if you're a southpaw or an orthodox fighter, uh, his left leg will move for, uh, first. So again, small step, small step. Okay, if he wants to come right, his right foot will move forwards, left foot follows. Okay, what we don't want to see is the wrong leg moving at the wrong time. So you just cross your feet for us, so there you go. So he's now off balance, if I push him, his full hands come down. Um, and he wouldn't be able to throw any punches, so it's, it's not natural uh, to move that way and to be able to throw punches. Okay, so it's important that the feet don't cross. One more time then, if we go forwards two steps, uh, back two steps, hands stay up, he stays balanced, left two steps, excellent, and then come right two as well. So all the way through that, he's staying nice and balanced, he'll be able to throw shots, he'll be able to move quickly, his hands are up, he's moving like a boxer, which again will enhance the sessions. What you'll find is, and we'll go into it a little bit more, is when we're doing pads, you, you'll circle more than you go forwards and backwards. Um, so like, when he, like we said, when, he, when he's circling, again, we don't want to cross the feet. We just take little steps and we start a circle. Okay, so that's the footwork. 
We'll, we'll go on to pad work next, uh, but what I will say is when you are holding pads, if I'm holding pads for Charlie, I'm in my boxing stance as well, okay? So I'm not stood there square on holding pads, I'm trying to make it feel real for my boxer. So I'm in my boxing stance as well, and my hands are here. So I step back with one step, he'll step forwards one step. Still in my boxing stance. Likewise, I move forwards, he or she's going to move back. If I step to my right, he or she's going to move to the left. They stay in front of me, and vice versa. So we're both in our boxing stance. This is exactly what would happen if they were obviously in the ring sparring. Um, so we try and assess what we try and recreate. So pad holder, you stay in your boxing stance as well, so you've got to know this as well as be able to tell your client this. Okay, so let's move on to the actual punches then. Okay, so now we're going to get on to the punches and we do a numbered system as most, most gyms would and I also suggest you guys do it as well. Um, it's a lot quicker, a lot smoother, a lot more professional. So there are eight punches or eight numbers for different punches and we'll cover six of them. The, um, the, the last two are slightly different and we'll look at that maybe in the level two course um, but for this course we just need the first six punches. Again, we're not teaching you to coach guys so they can get in the ring. We're teaching you so you can give your client a good experience on the pads and for them to enjoy it and feel like they're an actual boxer and obviously to look the part as well because there are going to be people watching you. So let's just run through the punches. So your boxer adopts his or her boxing stance. We're going to work off the jab first, so being right-handed, his jab to the left, and that's the number one punch. Again, I'm just going to give some real quick teaching points on the jab. Okay, so important that the right hand stays up when we throw the jab. The jab comes out nice and straight, nice and true, and it rotates, and we strike with the knuckle part of the glove, and then it retracts straight back to where it came from. That's how simple it is. We'll put some footwork in there in a second, but just work in the jab. Now, as a pad holder, what I'm trying to create is, a, a one person is, is a head, okay? So what I don't want to do is, and this will be more apparent when I, we do two or three shots, is, you know, is be holding the pads here and here, okay? I'm going to try and get it nice and close to my chin, uh, and like I said, we're going to work in this kind of head uh, area, this head zone in front of us, all right? Just before the punch lands, we're going to meet it with a little bit of resistance, okay? What we don't want is if I just get tired to throw the jab, just nice and lightly, is your hand just flying back, okay? You want to meet it with a little bit of resistance. You're going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt your boxer if that happens. Call the number, then show the pads. the best way to do it, okay? So start, and I'll do this with your clients as well so they understand the number system. Start on the spot. Find your range by getting your client to hold their jab out, just placing your pad on it, and they retract the jab, you now know you're in range. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do. Nice and slow to start with. I'll call the shot, he'll throw the punch. One, here, one, 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 one. Simple one, that's the jab. Number one punch. Number two punch, may swap positions actually. Number two punch, your backhand, doesn't matter if you're right-handed or a left-hander, the number two punch is always the backhand. Teaching points, again, try and watch all of this uh, while training your climb. Power for the shots comes from the floor, through the leg, the hips, the abs, and then the, arm, the arms to deliver the power, okay? So, when they're throwing the backhand, they're gonna rotate, they're gonna pivot on the back foot, pivots the knee, turns the hip over, turns the shoulder over, and then that right hand or the backhand comes straight out, and then to get, left hand stays up, and then to get back into that boxing start, they recoil the body straight back, and they keep that right hand back on their chin. So it comes fast out and fast back. All right, again, pad, this time it's to your right pad. So the jab's to the left pad in this case, right hand's to the right pad, keep it close to the chin, just nice and light to start with, rotate it, make sure you return the back first, and then snap it straight back, and again, pull. So I'm gonna hide the pads while I was actually boxing with my client, I'd be like this. Two, 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 two. So stance-wise, I'm in my boxing stance. When we start to do a little bit more, I'll actually keep both hands up because he's only throwing one punch and we're a little bit lazy in my left hand. Okay, so boxing stance again, I'm going to call it two, two, two. So keep it close to my chin. We'll do the individual shots and then we'll kind of put them together in combinations on the next video and I'll teach you how to do that. Left hook, um, hardest shot to teach, hardest shot to throw. Uh, great shot if you can get it right and clients love it. 
Just make sure that your client isn't throwing a left hook and sweeping it, okay? Because we can all do that, but it's actually an incorrectly thrown punch. And anyone watching you on the gym floor will, will be able to see that you've almost lost control of your client. Um, the power, again, comes from the hips. So we're going to turn the lead foot, so it pivots, and that will turn the hip, and then that's where the shock power comes from. Okay, so you start on the chin, you pivot on the front foot, boom, and then you turn the shot and, uh, and bring the hand up. Okay, elbow stays nice and high. Like I say, just if you can get them to do it as closely to this as possible, great. Um, but like I said, we're not, we're not teaching you to throw technically perfect left hooks for them to get into the ring. Pads, again, keep in that little zone. Keep it about the centre of your chin. Just get them to throw the left hook. The left hook's number three punch, so you call it three. Show you the pad. Shot is Three. Three. Three, three, last one, three, excellent. We will show you the four, not thrown very often, but the four is the right hook, thrown identical to the left hook, but reverse the side. So you pivot on the back foot, hand comes up, and you call it, show the pad. Four, 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 perfect now. Going on to the last two then, and then we'll show the combinations. Seven and eight, generally Clara's favourite punches, well the eight is, seven is the lead hand uppercut, eight is the back hand uppercut. You'll notice, body mechanics exactly the same. So if you throw the uh, same to the left hook. So you pivot on the front foot when you throw the left hook, you pivot on the front foot when you throw the left uppercut. Alright, so seven and eight. The eight punch, you pivot on the back foot when you throw the right cross, you pivot on the back foot when you throw the right uppercut. Body mechanics exactly the same. Okay, so we just do a single punches on their own. Pad is about your box's chin high, not your chin high, okay? You, know, you can have different sizes, so your box is chin high. Again, you call it show it. Seven. 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 Okay, so you see it's backhand stand up. So these are all the things I'm looking for. Make sure his hand comes back home, making sure that uh, his right hand stays up when he throws the shots, making sure he's turning through. Okay, number eight punch and right uppercut. So let's see it. So again, chin high, I'll call it show it. Eight. 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 Last one. Eight. Excellent. Done. So a quick recap on the punch number system, and then on the next clip, uh, the next chapter, we'll put them into combinations. So I mean, remember boxing starts, we're just going to do individual shots. Again, this is how I build up your client as well. So finding the range, just hold the jab out. There you go, so you know your range, you retract it, foot work's going to stay nice and still for now, just going to go through the numbers. So, one, two, three, four, you missed five and six, they're body shots, I didn't mention that, they're body shots, we may have done level two stuff, we'll move on, stay on level one, seven, eight, one more time, one, two, three, four, seven, eight. And then once you're a little bit better, again, still keep it single shots, maybe a little bit quicker before you start the combinations. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. And that is the punch numbering system. Get your client good at listening and throwing the correct shots, then you can move on to the next chapter, which is the combinations. Okay, so now you know how to get your client in the stance, how to get them moving about, and you know the punch number system, you can now start putting the punches together. Um, so we'll show you a couple of combinations. Um, you, you could probably find loads online, or up to a point you can make them up, just make sure they make sense. Um, you don't need clients throwing punches uh, that aren't proper combinations. It will feel uncomfortable and it'll look ridiculous. Um, and it's not going to help you keep clients or get new clients. So we're going to show you a couple of the real common combinations. Um, and if you learn these, introduce these to your clients. And then, like I say, look at other combinations later. But drill these ones first. So the very first one that we're going to do is a simple one-two. So I'm in my boxing stance. We're going to find the range by holding the jab out. So I'm in range. Simple one-two. Again, so I'll teach you a little bit of technical with a one-two. So when you throw the jabs nice and slow, and when the jab hand's about halfway back, that's when the back hand comes out. What you don't want them to do is two single punches like this. That's not a one-two, okay? That's a one then two, all right? So we like to do a one-two. So one, and then the jab hand's halfway back, boom, the back hand follows. 
Okay, now we're going to have to work in that zone. Okay, so this, this kind of head zone, everything's here and here, not here and here. Okay, so tell your client what you want, show them the pads. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for obviously good straight shots, no chopping of the shot. I'm making sure that the opposite hand to the one he's throwing is coming back to the chin. I'm making sure he's rotating through the shots. And we haven't really mentioned it much, but keeping the chin down. Okay, making sure again I'm working in my zone and I'm adding a little bit of resistance just before he lands the shot. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. There's your one-two. Simple, effective, gets the boxer thrown, good straight shots, uh, gets the heart rate up. We're going to add to that. Once you're happy with those two shots, bring in the left hook. One, two, three. Okay, a little bit more to think about. Now is when your rock is going to start dropping hands because he's got to throw more than two punches. It's natural. Hands start to drop. Keep an eye out, okay? Especially the left hand after he's thrown the jab. All right? Watch it drop to start with. Okay, so one, two, three. Jab, cross, good. And again. Good. And again. You'll see with the pads, jabs there, right hands here, left hooks here. Again, it's not one, two, three, or one, two, three, okay? Everything's here, here, here. So the boxer gets used to hitting the target in the same area each time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Again, keeping an eye on everything, the pivot in, his hands coming back to his, uh, his chin, making sure that he is rotating when he throws his shots. Okay, so there are your three, um, there are your, your first three you can learn, and you can add a fourth punch to that, which is your backhand, so one, two, three, two, really common, these are all real common combinations, so you can literally do a whole round easily, if not two or three rounds with these combinations, so we're going to throw in the last one, which is one, two, three, two, and down again. Good, so keeping my hands in that little zone. Once they're happy with it, get them to pick it up. Turn, a little bit quicker. So, one, two, three, two. Right, faster. And again, go. Faster, let's go. One more time, go. Good, so you're getting the heart rate up, you're telling them to throw it faster, automatically that they, that they will throw it faster. Just make sure they keep their technique. They're the first shots I would begin with. For anyone that's kind of new to boxing, I would not take it any further than that for a few sessions. Get them good at throwing those punches and then progress to the uppercuts. So, the next common combination, three punches. They throw the backhand uppercut, which is punch number eight. They then come in with a lead hook three, then a backhand two. Eight, three, two. All right, call it, and then throw the pad, they'll throw it. Again, their chin height, and not here, not here, 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 okay, work in that little head, all right, that little head zone, here, 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 all right, 8-3-2, it's a nice little fast combination, get them to throw it slowly first, 8 3 2 okay, say it, show it, they throw it, all right, once they've got it, same thing again, just work a little bit of pace, tell them you want a little bit of pace, 8-3-2, Pass your counts, go. One more. Okay, getting the hurry up, getting to throw the shots. Good three shot combination. We'll just show you one more combination. It's, it's giving you combinations, but it's also giving you an idea of how the pads should feel, how they should look. Okay, so uh, you, what you can do is just start that combination, the 8 3 2, just start it with a jab. Okay, so we're going to go 1 8 3 2. 1 8 3 2. And again. And again. Couple more. Last one. Okay. And then you can build up from there. You might add another left hook at the end. So one, eight, three, two, three. Let's go. One, eight, three, two, three. And here. One more. So it's really simple to build combinations. Let's do one more, add a right hand at the end of that. So now you've got a six shot combination. Six. And here. One more. Okay, so you've got your box of front, good shots. Technically, get a, technically throwing good shots, getting their heart rate up, um, and starting to feel now you know, a little bit more like a boxer, throwing combinations that you'd see uh, you know, the pros and the amateurs throw. Okay, so that is how you start putting your combinations together. Start simple, make sure they're thrown correctly first, and then build up the punch numbers.
So for this next chapter, we're going to put everything together that we've, we've done up to this point. Uh, and so you can see how it, how it should look over. Just We're going to do a one minute round. It's up to you guys. You might do, you might you know, keep it like they do. Uh, in the pros, do like a two, three minute round, minute break, and do like six rounds. Uh, we're just going to do a quick one minute round so you can see how it all fits together. Now, keep an eye that, uh, on, on the footwork, uh, on the throw of his shots, um, and how he just moves generally, and how, how I move as the pad holder. Okay, so you'll get an overview now of how it should look to people watching you guys on the pads. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, eight, three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, one, eight, three, two, one, eight, three, two, three, two. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, eight, three, two, faster. Good. One, one, two, one, two, three, two, one, one, eight, three, two, one, 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 two, one, two, three. Two, two, three, two, three, two, one, one, two, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, so now moving on to the next part of our pad work, and this is the, the more advanced part of the level one, and we're going to start bringing in a bit of defense now uh, in the form of head movement. So we'll show you the slips first, and then we'll show you the rolls, and we'll also show you the counter punching. So you would have heard it before, making your opponent miss and then making them pay. So moving the head and then coming back in with a shot after. But first of all, let's teach slipping. Now, slipping is Moving the head away from a straight shot, making sure you don't get caught. Be careful if you've got pads on when you're doing this, uh, because your pads are quite wide. Now what you want your boxer to do is move his or her, his or her head off the centre line. Now you can imagine there's an imaginary line that spits my feet. Uh, that line will be the same line any straight shot my opponent throws comes at me. So what I want to do is make sure my head moves off the centre line. Okay, I'm not moving my feet, I'm actually moving my head and rotating the body. So the shot actually misses me and comes over my shoulder. So that's what I want my opponent, or in this case my client, to do. So I'm going to throw a nice slow jab. And he's going to slip, or in this case he, to the outside of my punch. So say I'm jabbing here, boom. Outside of my punch is, is that way. Okay, it's away from my strong hand. And likewise, when we do the slipping the other way, when I throw my right straight, we want our opponent to slip again outside, away from the centre of the body. Okay, so nice and slow, just to get them used to slipping. So I'm going to throw it. I'm going to make sure I'm in range first by just holding my pad out. So I'm holding my pad out. I know I'm in range. I know, well, he knows if I throw a shot, he's going to have to move his head. Okay, so I'm going to throw a nice slow jab, and he's just going to turn his shoulder. See, now I've missed, I've missed the head. I know I like to tap him on the shoulder so they know that I, um, they slip correctly. And then I'll just bring my hand back, and he'll come back to his boxing stance. And again, it's nice and slow. He'll just move his head. And again, good. And again, one more time. Okay, what I don't want to do as a pad holder, and this is what I see a lot of people doing, is this is the shot. There's your jab, okay, so that makes your, uh, your client need to move their head. What you will find a lot of trainers will do, or especially throughout the room of personal trainers, they'll throw the jab here, because they're almost scared to go for their client's head. But this means that the client generally won't slip correctly. So we don't want to see punches going over shoulders, we want them to come straight and true towards the uh, towards your client's head, nice and slow, but so they actually do move the head correctly. Okay, so that's the slipping of the jab. So you throwing your jab and then moving. And now we want to show you a counter shot. Okay, so again, this makes it a bit more realistic. So when you're slipping the jab and turning the shoulder, this actually sets up the number two punch of the backhand. So as you retract your backhand, have your right pad ready, and they'll come back in with that right straight. And again, we'll just do it nice and slow. Slip, straight. Again, slip. 
one time. Slip, straight. Okay, so set up exactly like we have. No movement, nothing else. Teach them to slip, get them to do it slow time. Slip, straight. Again, slip, straight. Okay, once they've got the slip of the jab, we're going to go slip the other way. So we'll just turn around so you can see it. So this time I'm going to throw my right straight, get towards my box's head. He's going to turn the shoulders, twist the hips, and allow the shot to come over his shoulder. Okay, or his or her shoulder. In this case, uh, it's his shoulder, and he's going to come back with a left hook. Pull. Okay, but in fact, we'll strip it back. Let's go straight away just with a slip. So I'm going to throw my right hand. He's just going to slip it, making sure he's turned his body over and, uh, and the shot's missed his head. And he's, he won't be able to see it from there, but his eyes are still on me. Because you'll notice his body twists. So let's go back around. Again, slip my right hand. His body naturally is going to twist. Okay, and what you generally find could happen is his head will just go with the body and he's suddenly looking over there, all right? But he will always be looking at your opponent. Okay, so yeah, his head will move, but his eyes stay firmly on me. All right, just come back around. So we're going to add the left hook to that. Again, naturally, because you're, you're, you're in a turned over position, because you're in that slip position, your left hook's already primed, ready to be thrown. So as I bring my right hand back, my left pad's there, and he throws the left hook. And again, he'll slip it, left hook. Slip it, one more time, slip, okay, so if we were doing this as a combination, we'd get our boxer to throw a couple of shots first, normally a one-two, then get them to slip, and then get them to throw a right hand, so we call it like this, one-two, slip the jab, right hand, or you do it by numbers, one-two, slip, two, one-two, slip, two, again, pads aren't everywhere, okay, they're all nice and central, one-two, slip, two, one-two, slip, two, good. Again, one, two, slip, two, one, two, slip, two. One more time, one, two, slip, two. Excellent. And again, as you get better with that, you can progress the combination and bring in another left hook and another right straight. So, one, two, slip, two, three, two. One, two, slip, two, three, two. And again, one, two, slip, two, three, two. Last one. One, two, slip, two, three, two. Okay, now if you want him to slip the other way, again, we'll just come around. So if we want him to slip the other way, we're going to throw three shots first. One, two, three. And this will naturally set him up for a slip of the right hand and a three-hour right pad. He'll slip it and then throw a three. We'll just do a nice and slow to start with. One, two, three, slip, three. One, two, three, slip, three. And again. One, two, three, slip, three. Yeah, again. One, two, three, slip, three. Okay, again, you can add another punch. You might add another right straight left hook. So again, it's called like this. One, two, three, slip. Three, two, three. One, two, three, slip. Three, two, three. And again. One, two, three, slip. Three, two, three. One, two, three, slip. Three, two, three. Okay, so they are your slips. Again, make sure your boxer or your client is comfortable first with numbers, comfortable with the movement, and then bring these in. Reminder, or a little sort of a recap, what we don't want to see is this. One, two, slip, two. One, two, slip. Two, okay? Throw it directly out of your client's head. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second defence and the last one that we cover on the level one course. Uh, and that is the, the roll or uh, what's known as the bob and weave. Um, so it, it's a little bit say, more advanced than the slip and it's taking the head not just off the centre line but also changing the height. Okay, so uh, we'll do like we have done with all the drills. We'll start on the spot um, and then once we master that we can then move. Uh, we will do it without throwing any shots first and then we'll do it by putting some shots in. Likewise, we won't throw any counter punches first, we'll just get the movement correct. Okay, so the rolls, like I said, or bob and weeds, I'm going to call them rolls, they take your head off the centre line and they change the level. Okay, so I'm going to throw to start with a nice big swinging right hook. And I'd suggest as a uh, trainer, when you train someone for the first time, and to be fair, even when you're carrying them on a pads and they've done a little bit more, throw is quite a wild, wide shot so they can see it coming. And all they're going to do is, first of all, they're just going to turn the shoulder so it's a right shot, so it's coming in this way. Turn the shoulder just slightly away from the shot, and then from there, they'll drop down and they'll roll underneath it. So turn the shoulder first, and then drop down and underneath, okay? We are setting up for a counter shot, but we're not going to throw it just yet. Okay, so I'm just going to get him to roll the right hand. So I'll say, roll the right, and you go underneath it, good. 
roll the right. As you can see, I'm not throwing a technical right hook, I'm throwing a nice wide right hook so you can see it coming. Roll the right. Do it one more time. Roll the right. Everything's come around. So that's the right. And then we're going to roll the left. So again, he'll turn his shoulder away from the shot, drop down, and go underneath it. A lot of times you'll get just the dot where people will literally just down and up. Now, for a beginner level, I'll accept that. Uh, but as soon as you can, you want to progress that. Because the thing with a duck is, yeah, the shot might miss you, but you're not really priming any shots through his counters. Um, and although we're not teaching, like I say, you to get into the ring, uh, we still want to make it as realistic as possible. So if you're moving ahead to make the miss, then you want to be able to counter something, otherwise you might as well just step out of range. Okay, so you'll twist the body like, the best way I was always taught, or well, two ways actually, was imagine like you're, you're, you're writing the letter U. So you go down one way and up the other, down one way, and up the other, or imagine you're going under under a fence. So you, you drop down and go under the fence, down and go under the fence. They're two different good ways of trying to cue in your client if they're struggling. Back to the left. So you twist away from the shot first, then drop underneath it. And again, drop underneath. So again, I'll just say roll the left, good. roll the left, roll the left. All right. Once you've got the movement, mix it up a bit. Roll the right, roll the left. Roll the left, roll the right. Okay, so you can see you're now working a little bit of reactions, reflexes, as well as the movement itself. So we've got our, uh, our client now rolling correctly. Now we're going to throw in the counter shots. The same counter shots as when you're slipping. If he's going to roll the left, as he rolls, he's now going to, the weight's now set on the back foot. He's got his right hand primed, throw that right straight. Okay, so he rolls the left, right straight. Boom. Okay, you can tell your client that. Tell your client, roll the left, right straight. Boom. Or, if you're using numbers like you should be, roll the left two. Roll the left two, good. Roll the left two. Roll the left two. Okay, again you can add punches to that. Roll the left two, three, two. Roll the left two, three, two. One more time, roll the left two, three, two. Excellent, come around. Lastly then, roll the right and you're setting up the left hook. So nice and slow, or just for the left hook on its own. So we're going to roll the right as he comes back up. Oh, there's his left hook. So to cue that, roll the right three. Roll, roll the right three. One time, roll the right three. This is now again a bit more with the uh, advanced with the pad work. This is where things can go a little bit, a uh, little bit haywire. Things can go a little bit wide. So be wary of doing this. Roll the right three. Roll on the right and having the three pad over here somewhere. More than likely, we'll come around so you can see that again. More than likely that your box is going to miss the shot or going to throw an incorrect left hook because the pad's too far. They'll almost throw it like a jab. So you're going to roll the right and you don't want to see the left hook pad here. There's no way you can properly throw a left hook pad. So make sure it stays centre. Roll the right three. Roll the right three. And again, you can add a couple more shots. Roll the right three, two, three. Roll the right three, two, three. One more time. Roll the right three, two, three. Okay, now just to put combinations in before and after, you cue it like this. One, two, roll the left, two, three, two. One, two, roll the left, two. You can do a single shot, I think we're in a little bit further in. One, two, roll the left, two. One, two, roll the left, two. And again, one, two, roll the left, two. Now let's add these extra shots, add a three, two again. One, two, roll the left, three, two, uh, two, three, two. And again, one, two, roll the left, two, three, two. One more time. One, two, roll the left. Two, three, two. Sweet. All right. Lastly then, if you're getting, you want to roll the right, much like when we slip in, throw the one, two, three, roll three. Okay? And you tell them that. One, two, three, roll the right three. One, two, three, roll the right three. You want to stay as Charlie as close to this hand. Alright? So as you see as he drops, he's not wasting energy. Go too low this time. Go really low. Okay, so he's wasting a lot of energy and a lot of time and speed. He stays really close to when we roll. So make sure you climb again, that's what you want to watch out for, making sure they go low, they keep the hands up when they roll. So roll the right, three, two, three first. So roll the right, stays close, boom, boom, Okay, right, let's have the shots again. One, two, three, roll the right, three, two, three. Roll, boom, down again. One, two, three, roll the right, three, two, three. Okay, so watching the pads, making sure they're staying in that, but that head zone, again, one, two, three, roll the right, three, two, three. Excellent, last one. Uh, one, two, three, roll the right. Three, two, three. Excellent. Okay, so there you rolls. That's how you do them with your client. 
like I say, start in range, single rolls, add the shots after, and then add the shot the counter shots after. Then once you're happy with the rolling in the counters, add the shots before, and then you can do it again a couple of rounds of just that. Okay, so you've now taught your client how to, how to uh, their stance, their movement, the punch number systems, the slipping, the counters, the rolling, the counters. You're pretty much at your level one, that's, that's the end of what you need to know. It's now a case of putting it all together. So we're going to do a real quick demo. This will take a bit of time for you guys to catch up, um, so don't try and rush it. Just take it at your own pace. Um, but once you're ready, start putting it all into practice. And this, like I say, will make your client feel like a boxer. So this is what it should look like. One, two, slip two. One, two, three, slip three, two, three. One. Eight, three, two. Eight, three, two. One, two, roll two. One, two, roll two, three, two. One. One, two. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two, roll two. Eight three two. One two three. One two three. Roll three. One two three. Roll three two. One. One. One two. One two three. Slip three. One two. One. One two three two. One two three two roll two three two. This time one two three two slip three three two. And again with the slip this time. One two three slip three two. One two three roll three two three. One. One. One two three. One. Eight three two. Eight three two three. Eight three two three two. Then roll two. Eight three two three two. Roll two. And again. Roll. Again. Two. One two. One two slip two to finish. Okay, so what you'll see is occasionally there were a mistake we made. Don't stop. Just redo that same combination. Okay, what you don't want to do is drop the hands and come out. Okay, you're in a round, you're in a round of boxing. So if they don't get it right, they keep the hands up, you go again. And that's what the whole drill should look like once you've got everything, all your numbers and counts and slips.